Hello and welcome to course eight in our Cyber Essential series. Today we'll be going over scripting. This is an outline for this video. We're going to review the importance of reading and writing code. We're going to review the core concepts as it relates to uh, scripting. We're going to talk about some scripting languages as well, some of the compiled languages. And we'll also talk about uh, some ways in which you can automate tasks and uh, additional resources you can use to improve upon your programming capabilities. So why is coding, programming, scripting, anything having to do with code important? Well, at the end of the day, in uh, offensive security or defensive security, having some idea of how code uh, and software, uh, of how code coding works, helps you to understand software. This as a red teamer can help you identify different types of flaws um, within programs as well as applications. It can also allow for you as a red teamer to be able to modify different types of proof of concept scripts depending upon the language they're written in and your familiarity that you have. From the blue team side of the uh, perspective or the defensive side of security, knowing code can also help you to modify uh, and edit scripts or programs to suit your own needs or automate a particular type of task. So it can, so knowing code or knowing programming uh, can help with scripting and automating tasks to re reduce repetition. So if you're doing a task over and over again and you want to reduce that, like let's say you're scanning or reconnaissance from an offensive security perspective, if you wanted to automate that and, and include some logic to parse out the data that you're finding, you can do this um, via scripting. So furthermore, both from the offensive and defensive side of security, Knowing how to code allows for you to create your own tools. So if you want to um, you know, work within virus total or some uh, other threat intelligence platform to aggregate the information and provide you with an IOC list um, that you can use to spot check uh, information as it relates to alerts and alarms in your SIM, you can integrate with those APIs and do your own scripts from a red team offensive security perspective. If you're doing reverse engineering or you're looking at, let's say, different types of uh, Soho routers and you're identifying different types of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities or broken authentication measures within the web um, interface available on those, you could use maybe, let's say, Bash or Python to go through and create a proof of concept script to, to exploit the vulnerability that you've identified. And you can provide that information um, as you submit either for a bug bounty or you submit uh, your details to the, the vendor, right? You can say, hey, here's this script that I wrote uh, that will compromise uh, this particular vulnerability. So coding, the ability to understand programming um, and to understand how to use code to do your job is beneficial. You don't have to be a software developer. You don't need to be a software engineer. Um, you don't need to understand at a low level the ins and outs of programs. It can be beneficial when you get into the areas of reverse engineering. So I'll add maybe an asterisk there. Depending upon the work or job uh, that you facilitate, knowing more than just the fundamentals uh, can become important. So what are some core concepts uh, that you do need to be aware of? Well, you need to be aware of the different types of data that can be used. So we have integers, floats, characters, strings, arrays, and lists. We have provided examples in each. So quickly, integers are used for storing whole numbers, floats, numbers in decimal forms, characters is a single characters, um, and this is not used in all languages. Strings is an array or a sequence of characters. So like my name, uh, Josh. 
An array can be a collection of elements or other variables. So cars equals Toyota, Tesla, Tesla Ford. Those are different brands of cars. And then a list is very similar to an array. However, it's used to store lists of objects. So depending upon the language used, sometimes these, these naming conventions and definitions or examples might be different. So just be aware of that based upon the language that you're going to be scripting in. So um, next we wanna talk about functions. Simply put, functions are small chunks of code which you can call multiple times within your script. It's useful for when you need to perform a certain task several times. Here we talk about how it's a reusable block of code uh, that is only run when it is called. Um, it can be passed data or used a previously defined global variable. Um, after it has completed its ta the task of the function, it then returns the data back to the main flow of the program. So here you see um, in Python, we're defining sum, uh, and then we're working through to assign the variables of X and Y to five and 10, to then call sum of those two, of those two numbers and then print the total. So you see there in Python 3, the execution of that quick Python example, uh, when you add five and 10 together, you get 15. Next, we have control statements. So this determines whether other statements will be executed. So you have if, if that, if this, then that. So if, the, if then statements, you have else, you have um, while wow, true, do as well. Um, so these, these alter the, the flow of a program. So, um, here on the right hand side, we have a couple examples uh, for uh, an if statement, an else if statement, and then else uh, put together into a single script. So if, if this statement is true, do this code. Else if this statement is true, then run this portion of code, else do this. Um, and so here in the example, we have um, you know, if the number is less than five, if the number is less than 10, if the number is less than 15, or if the number is, is greater than or equal to uh, 15. So prompts a user for input to enter a number. And then as you can see in the execution on the command line, 10 is entered, number is less than 15 is what's printed um, on the return. And then the next time we execute, got 11, and 11 is less than 15, right? And then we enter the number 100 and then it says number is greater than or equal to uh, 15. So those are control statements. Next, uh, we'll talk about loops. It's a <coughs> very powerful feature in programming. It's um, where you can, you, you have a repeated sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met. So, do, do, do a task X number of times, given this condition I give it. Um, it, it does simplify repetitive tasks. Uh, this is where um, while loops and, and for loops come into play. So I apologize before I mentioned in control statements, I said, wow, that was an error. While loops are, are covered here. So common languages, uh, Python, is one of the arguably uh, most beginner-friendly languages to learn. This is the new pearl <laughs> of uh, scripting language basic, ba languages, basically. Um, it's a very popular and well-documented language. There's a number of exploitation and post-exploitation tools written in it. Lots of proof, proof of concept code published to GitHub is written in Python. It is native on most um, you know, Linux-based operating systems or GNU Linux. Um, you, one thing to be aware of is that Python 2.7 uh, is deprecated and Python 3.0 usage, or, or I think there maybe it's 3.5 now, um, is what is to use. There are syntax changes between the two. Another uh, scripting language is, is Bash. It's, a, it's very native to Linux systems. It stands for the born again shell. Anything that is typed uh, from the bash command line can be put into a bash script. Uh, and these commands can be wrapped in those conditional statements like we talked about before. 
They can also accept different user inputs to do different tasks, and it's great for automating tedious administrative tasks in, in, uh, in Linux. PowerShell is a Windows system administration tool. It allows for scripting and automations of tasks in Windows without programming. Uh, it is installed in all modern Windows OS systems. It's making its way to, uh, to Nix-based operating systems as well with PowerShell Core. This leverages the Windows.NET framework. Uh, again, what, when we um, talk about in the future living off the land, we'll talk a bit more about PowerShell. Um, and as we talk about adversarial tradecraft in our later videos, we'll bring it up again as well. But it's commonly used for living off the land because it's native to a Windows operating system. And it's used for malware droppers. So there's an example down, the, down there uh, with a PowerShell one-liner that is pulling from a remote server, a payload, uh, and then executing it in memory. Uh, C-sharp and .NET, this is um, a compiled language and can run by default on most modern Windows OSs. Um, .NET Core is, it, because of .NET Core, it's becoming a cross-platform tool. Um, and much, many people are pivoting actually away from PowerShell Tradecraft into writing offensive C Sharp or programs in .NET. Um, down below, we give an example of writing a C, uh, of a tool that's written in C Sharp that leverages .NET Core. So it's like, it is PowerShell, but it's titled not PowerShell.exe. This is because PowerShell from a defender's perspective has become part of a, a blacklisted tool set. Um, so, and this is basically just because red teamers started to choose and leverage PowerShell, that blue team started to cache PowerShell and say, hey, let's add that to a deny list. So um, earlier I mentioned how Python is the new, is the new Perl. Well, so let's mention Perl, right? Uh, it, it was very common before Python. Uh, it is also common to many uh, Nix environments or, or Linux-based operating systems. Hey, you can also use shell commands in, with Perl script with Perl scripts, uh, and there is an older and some other older security tools written in Perl like Nick2 or Slow Loris and others. Ruby um, had popularity in uh, offensive security for a while due to Metasploit and the Metasploit modules being written in Ruby. Uh, it has lost a bit of popularity over the years. That being said, there are still people um using using ruby we'll talk about uh, metasploit in our next uh lunch and learn uh cybersecurity essentials video as a commonly used penetration testing framework and um knowing ruby or how ruby works can be beneficial especially if you want to move your proof of concept scripts off of python uh, off of bash or Perl, and, and write them in ruby so some other languages, these are not scripting languages, they are compiled. Um, however, if you're seriously pursuing a career in cybersecurity, maybe in reverse engineering or malware development, knowing C and C++ code is useful. And in really understanding them, it gives you a full understanding of how software works and the types of bugs uh, that can typically manifest themselves. So a note on automated tasks. Why do the same thing over and over when the computer can do it for you? So if you're doing scanning and enumeration, fingerprinting, port scanning, DNS enumeration, exploitation, and fuzzy, you can use scripts um, to automate those tasks, to run a ping sweep of a network, to automate and chain together various NMAP scripts to do fingerprinting and enumeration of services running on, horse, on, on a host. Uh, if you're going to do DNS enumeration and, and you're going to brute force subdomains, all right, very useful to do that with Python, or if you're going to um, fuzz different types of variables, you can, or, or different types of subdirectories or things within a in, in a web application, right? Using using a, a script to accomplish that task is going to be and probably produce results faster than you doing it manually. That being said, though, we should mention that manual verification, even when automating tasks, is important. Some additional learning resources. Well, so this was a quick rundown of programming, uh, scripting, and overall uh, coding. Uh, 
by no means do we assume that we are authorities in this space. And that's why we direct you to these additional learning resources like Code Academy, Udemy, um, or Khan, Khan Academy, Code Wars, even some MIT uh, courseware. And at the end of the day, nothing beats picking up, picking up a book and then writing your own or scripting your own project. So that has been course eight in our cybersecurity essential series. If you have any questions, go ahead and email us at cyberrange at techdata.com and we'll see you on the next one.